Hi, I'm Dustin Transfer from Brampton Transit. Today we're going to go through the daily fueling process and the servicing procedures. So when entering the fuel bay, we're going to use a painted line on the floor as a reference point of where to stop. And we're going to correspond that with a flashing strobe for the beacon. And that strobe light actually indicates that the bus is communicating with the electronic system to identify what the bus is. If that light is not strobing, we're going to know that the bus has a mechanical issue and we're going to have to write it up and present it to the mechanics. So when entering the fuel bay, we need to be cautious of pedestrians as well as slip hazards. When entering the fuel bay on the floor, there can be diesel, water, or oil, and that can reduce the traction on the tires for the buses. And we need to be conscientious of anybody walking by in the area because it can be a high traffic area at times. When entering, we need to be aware of where the stop point is to activate the fuel gun, as well as to watch the beacon light to make sure that the pumps have been activated once we pull in. The posted speed limit to enter the building is 10, but when entering the fuel bay, we need to be a little bit more cautious. And anywhere from 10 and under is advisable because of what potential hazards we face. And keeping your foot above the brake at all times when entering is best to make sure if you have to make an emergency stop. So on our daily nights, when we are cleaning and servicing the interiors of the bus, we need to be cautious, cautious of any hazards and aware of any biohazards that are there, anywhere from blood to uh, sharps that can puncture skin or gloves. Uh, and that's always a general concern that we need to be aware of on a daily basis. So some of the biggest concerns we need to be careful of and aware of when we're cleaning the buses is down at the sides of the seats. So when standing and walking up the aisles when we're sweeping, we're, we're aware of any type of things and we can see them. So we also need to use and harness any of the aspects that we have, like the reflective surface here but we need to be careful not to reach down because we can see it could be a transfer of paper, but the, the concern would be is if there's any needles that are there or anything else that could puncture your skin, we have to be worried about infectious disease. So when we're dealing with the stuff like this, because we can't reach down and actually get it with our fingers, what we need to do is we need to either use the broom and use the broom to come across the side and sweep everything out, and then we can be aware of what's there, or sometimes uh, we have different tools that we can use to actually scrape everything out to make sure that we don't get our hands stuck in between or get punctured by anything that could be there. So the first thing we do when we start to fuel is we're gonna come back, we're gonna open the fuel bay door, and then we're gonna open the posi gap. So that's just the dust cover. So we're gonna remove this. And that's gonna give us access to the actual posi couple, like this is the inlet for the posi. So now we're gonna take the fuel gun itself, and the fuel gun itself has three teeth that, li that line up with the, um, the receptacle for the bus. So we're gonna put it on and it needs to be turned to lock. So we're gonna flip this lever and that's gonna actuate the plunger to open up the, uh, the collar into the bus so we can receive fuel. So we're gonna pull the handle up and that's gonna actually open up the valve inside to allow the fuel to actually come down the gun and fill up the bus. The second step to it is actually flipping this toggle. This toggle authorizes the pumps that once uh, it's authorized by the fuel zone that the fuel will begin to cycle through and the pumps will be activated. And the final step is, is we scan our card and what ends up happening is it pops up and says authorized and it, sh it says what the vehicle identification number is and that's the process of the VDU. Once we've scanned it, up here we'll say authorized, it'll cycle over, cycle over and turn on, it will re reset the counters at zero and begin to count that fuel for the bus. And the whistle we have right now shows that the bus is receiving fuel and this whistle actually indicates that um, the air pressure is being released as the fuel goes in. And once the bus is done, the whistle will stop. The trigger itself will disengage automatically through pressure. That's how we know that the fueling gun is now done and the bus is full for fuel. And the one thing we need to verify now is the DEF. So we're gonna open this door and this is gonna give us access to the DEF, which is the diesel exhaust fluid. So we're gonna remove this dust cap here. And this light here shows that it's indicating that it needs to be topped back up. So this is a quick, uh, quick connect system. And the reason it's set up this way is because uh, the fluid uh, shouldn't be exposed to um, oxygen or air at all because what it does is it actually turns, uh, it solidifies into this salt. And we can see that that can actually, if it were to enter this system, could actually cause a problem. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna connect the, the quick connect. So we're gonna pull the collar back and we're gonna push it on. So now we know that this is a sealed system and we know this is fully connected. We're allowed to, we're able to authorize how much is gonna go in. So we're gonna to toggle this switch over. Green. So once it turns, once it's full and the light's solid green, we know that it's no longer able to receive any more fluid. So we're gonna remove the quick connect by pulling the collar back. 
and that removes the system. This actual little piston here is actually flush, which means it's not stuck back by any of the, calcium, any of the solidified uh, fluid. We're gonna reattach this dust cap, and we're gonna close that door over. So when entering the, uh, the exhaust, the engine bay, we need to put the square key in and turn it over. And this little dot actually indicates where the tooth is. So right now it's in the upright position, which is removed now from the, from the locking collar that's there. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we can see that right now it's pointing towards. So we know that the tooth is actually locked against that piece of metal that's behind there. And once we turn it up, it gives us the ability to open the door. Now, due to seasonal, when I open this personally, I step to the side, and that lets any debris that builds up here across this rim, whether it be salt or dirt, gives it the opportunity to fall instead of falling in your face or breathing it in. It's just one way of protecting yourself. Um, so what we do then is we move on to, over to the coolant door. So when we come into the, into the coolant door, there's two parts to check in this system, and some buses is actually more. This lever right here is actually a release valve for pressure, so we're pulling it down and it's letting the built-up pressure inside the unit clear. So when we open this door, if there's no coolant uh, receptacle to actually see where the level is, it's not gonna shoot out at us. This bus presently actually has one, which is indicated by whether it's high or full. So when we open this door, it's actually on a pressured band. So we'll open the door slowly, just to make sure if there's any excess pressure that's still remaining, it's not gonna shoot at us. And this catch right here actually stops the door from blasting open. If there's any remaining pressure, that would actually cause coolant to hit us. So we open this door and we see it's got a, uh, it's actually full of coolant. We see it's got a seal and this, this section of the seal actually seats into the, into the rubber gasket there. So this bus is definitely full. So we're gonna close it over. Automatically, as soon as that clasp is done, it's hooked up, it seals it. And this gives it the airtight seal for pressure. So what we do is we're gonna check the oil. So take it out, wipe the dipstick down. We're gonna remove any of the oil that's there right now. Put it in again. Once we remove it, what we're gonna do is we're actually checking to see if the, the line is full. Now this bus still has uh, adequate oil. So what we do is you can see the full line and where the oil is indicated. So this add line here is gonna indicate how much oil we need to add. Based on each bus, it depends how much oil we need to add. So this bus is fine, so we're gonna return the dipstick back into the, uh, into the oil. If this bus did need oil, it's got a, safe, it's got a catch right here. So we lift up the spring-loaded catch and we, that's the oil receptacle. Since the bus doesn't need any oil or coolant and everything's fine, we're gonna actually depress the safety lock for the, kit, for, the, for the hood prop, and we're gonna close the engine bay back down. Once we've closed this door, we need to make sure that we lock it back as a safety precaution. So we lock the two locks on this bus, one there and this one. We just turn it over. So once this bus is done fueling, we're gonna shut off this toggle we're gonna walk over to the, uh, the system here and we're gonna hit no, and that's gonna shut down the fuel zone. And we're gonna walk back over now and we'll end up disconnecting the actual fuel gun itself. And this is just the reverse process. So we're gonna roll this switch back and what that does is it pulls the plunger back into the head and that gives us the ability to turn it and remove the gun. After that's done, Close the dust cap and close the fuel bay door. And that's the process for fueling and inspecting oil and coolant as well as service in the interiors of the vehicle.